Good morning. It's Monday, June 17th, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, When Good Becomes Enemy of Best. And our scripture is Ephesians chapter 4. Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. Every time I convince myself I'm done with it, that I'm not going to think about it, or write about it, or care about it ever again, the Apostle Paul gets in my way. He's like that, constantly reminding us about love. And to use the word love, there's no sense of smarmy, warm and fuzzy emotionalism in the mix. The Apostle's quote-unquote love, of which Paul is not the originator but merely the messenger, is that singularly godlike, selfless love, agape. In this is no room for emotion-driven, touchy-feely, I'm okay, you're okay drivel. This kind of love is much more difficult, requires using your brain, and is eminently greater at fixing human relationships. This love is what Paul was driving at when he challenges believers to live a life worthy of that to which God calls us. Note the explanation from the Encyclopedia of the Bible. Quote, Christians who wish to lead a life worthy of the calling to which they have been called are obliged, in imitation of their Lord, to forbear one another in love, with all lowliness, meekness, and patience. That is, they are to exercise calm patience under provocation, avoid resentment and retaliation, be slow to judge and punish, and be ever ready to forgive. Paul, of course, got in my way with this because he calls us to use every power, resource, and possible effort to stay united. Now, for someone who belongs to the tribe called United Methodist, them's fighting words. Well, at least it would seem so. I hate fighting or conflict of any kind. Perhaps I owe it to my hardwired nature to be shy and introverted. Perhaps it was my mother's introverted training, or just the prevailing era's mantra of not saying anything if you had nothing nice to say. But whether your profile is that of wall-flowering recluse, or highly active drama queen mixing it up in the latest brouhaha, you're not even near baby understanding of God's agape if you're just willing to sit and fume, or worse, strike back like a counter-punching president. That is not anywhere in the same universe with forbearing or making every effort to keep united in the spirit. I fear for my tribe that we are descending into the hell of plotting and intrigue and manipulation of institutional infighting, which is anything but forbearing one another, remaining humble and gentle. This has no chance at all at ending what has been a dividing war for decades. And it's the exclusive fault of neither one side nor the other. Rather, it's pure evil that drives separation of people who are called to the worthy, albeit quite difficult, task of being bound together in selfless living so the world may truly see God. Admittedly, there is good on both sides of the not nearly united Methodist Holy War. Both want to be connected to God and serve Him. Both want to be a blessing, not a curse. Both sides want to grow in love and usefulness in the kingdom. But when that good intention becomes tainted with human need to control and own and manipulate in order to accomplish keeping their side of the elephant as holy while disposing of the rest of the beast, well, let's just say we've allowed the good to become enemy of the best. For you today, if you're stuck in some holy war and sides are taken and you're being pulled in either or both directions, stop. Think. Be annoyed by the Apostle Paul's call to get your stuff together under the tent of God's kind of love and choose to forbear, forgive, and bring together. That is the best that will cooperate with the Spirit to drive the combatants to examine their so-called good. 
Get you on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.